Hi, I'm Kelly Heidbreeder and this is Lenaway. We have our cameras in the hands of our student reporters all around Lenaway County to get that first-hand look at the incredible experiences right here in our community. And a really fun class at Onstead Middle School is a CAD class with Mr. Hunt. This class teaches kids how to use the basics of a computer-aided design program and pushes kids to use their creativity and problem-solving skills every day. Let's take a peek in the shop. Hi, I'm Jason Hunt. I'm a project lead the way teacher for Onstead Middle School and we have a design and modeling class right now. We're using Autodesk Inventor Pro software to teach basic three-dimensional modeling and right now we are working on our, our uh, introduction to parts, making parts and drawings and uh, assembling models so we can move on to more advanced projects. Um, we've learned how to build simple shapes like this and then we put them into a sheet, a drawing, and put dimensions on it by hitting baseline and then we highlight it and you just click hit create and then put it where you want it. We've also learned how to color an object by going to appearance and then you can pick any color you want and then it just colors it. We work a lot with measurement and learning how to take measurements and provide dimensions on drawings and uh, making actual 3D models and uh, there is a tremendous amount of information to learn what to, tools to click on and uh, to use in the what right operational order is the most difficulty. Um, basic math skills measurement also is we reinforce that. Uh, kids seem to really enjoy it because it allows for personalized learning and creativity. A lot of help from my teacher Mr. Hunt and from people around and it's made a lot more sense compared to last year. Thanks, Mr. Hunt. I'm sure the students are excited for all the fun projects coming up. Now let's go over to Morency Schools where they are taking their classroom outside. We had a challenge that came to us from a parent and some of the elementary um, who just said, you know, is there any way that you would be interested in doing something for the elementary that would kind of pull in a lot of what you're trying to do in the stream program. How the outdoor classroom started was um, we did it as a project, like as a competition, like whoever the school board votes on for the best um, outdoor classroom design wins and gets to build the design. And they could go in whatever direction they were supposed to try and combine as many things that the elementary wanted as possible and come up with their with their ideas. We went to TNR and they helped us make like a 3D model of it, like they do when they're like landscaping. When we presented it, it gave like a better visual of what it would look like. We definitely wanted to have like a shelter, so if like they were out there and it was raining, like they wouldn't get like rained on. We have stumps that are color coded, so if they wanted their groups to be color coded, they can just go out and find a stump to sit on. We have a big tire over there. It's going to be filled with concrete, and that's for a bigger seating place for like a larger group. We wanted to have certain things out there so like we have a nature center. This is the observation station. If birds are out you can watch them feed on this stuff. These benches were given to us but from the elementary PTO and it's just a really nice place to sometimes relax during the summer or autumn or whatever because it's really pretty. So this is our music station where all the kids can come and just start smacking the pans. We asked like different families if they had any pans that weren't able to be used anymore. They wanted to donate them. We all thought that this would be a good idea because the kids love to make a lot of noise. Last year we got about $10,000 in grant money, which was awesome. Um, we also uh, were given some donations by different groups and organizations, individuals in the community. We had services and materials donated, and so we were able to actually build this entire project with zero cost to the district, which is fantastic. My thought is that it would help them 
interact with nature with nature more than it would with them being inside and learning about the outside. It took some time and a lot of screws, but we got it all together. We went outside a lot last year. It was really fun because like we're not tied up in the classroom all day and like sitting in chairs. We were outside actually building and doing stuff. I really didn't have any idea how how far along we would get and how much we would be able to accomplish. But the more they got into it, the more excited they were, and I could see that they were going to be able to, to actually do it. I think for them, they, they had no idea that they were going to be able to do something that big, and it, I think it'll be something that they remember always. Well, that looks like a fun experience for those students. Hey, we'll be right back with more right after this. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. Bike. Donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Goodwill. Donate stuff. Create jobs. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back. We have a great story showing our construction students in action. Grab your safety glasses and hammers and let's go. So right now we have sheeting up. We have the rafters going, we're finishing up the supports that go on the rafters to make sure they, so the roof doesn't collapse in. Rafters, it's a lot more math than everything else. I mean, everything else you can kind of measure and get lengths on, but rafters, it's a lot more math and a lot of angles and things you have to figure out. Once we finish it, we got to take it all apart because can't transport it as big as it is because it's pretty huge. So um, we take it all apart, bring it on down to the prison, and then we're going to reassemble it and put everything up there. Once we finish it, it's going to be it's going to look really nice. So glad we get to be a part of it. Great work, everyone! Now Clinton students are getting creative with clay. Let's check that out. Last week I introduced him to the concept of ceramic pottery and gave him a brief history of how it has evolved from functional pottery within ancient history where it just stored our food and then also how it's turned into more of decorative pottery, something that we could put in display within our homes. They were able to look at references of other artists as well as take in their own personal interest to create three different designs based off one theme. Uh, the reason why we decided to have a K-12 ceramic program is to allow the students to have this experience of playing with clay and understanding that there's a chemical and a physical change within the clay from something that is dirt and water to a hard substance that we could use as functional or decorative pottery. The earlier the students are able to practice these skills, the more advanced their projects are going to be as they continue up through the middle school and high school projects. So today what they're doing right now is day three of coil building with ceramic pottery. They need to create a functional plate, bowl, or cup. 
They're working on finding texture within their coils. I'm working on uh, coil pottery, and this is just like a little dog bowl or something like that. I added a little dog right there. I made this plate like out of coils. I made a ton of coils, and then I decided to put like handles on the side so you could pick it up easily. Making a cup right now. Uh, I started out with a bottom coil like this, and then I built up with it from the bottom. I'm just like making it a little taller, and then. Uh, put more design and like more coils like I have right here in the front. You have to roll out a piece of clay and it can't be any thicker or thinner than your pinky and then you uh, score it. You take a tool like this. You put lines on top or somewhere or where you're gonna put the other uh, coil and then you get your clay a little bit wet. And once that dries it's gonna like clamp together on the little pe uh, parts that go into it. Currently in this project, I'm only challenging them to use coil techniques where they're really just rolling out the clay into either like snake or worm-like thicknesses. I just use two hands, yeah. start in the center, and then I move out. And then within seventh grade, I will also teach them more about how to manipulate pinch pot and slab uh, techniques so that they can start to build more complex forms. Providing our students with a well-rounded education, both in the two-dimensional forms as well as three-dimensional forms, will give them a nice strong structure so that they can continue with their artistic endeavors. That's some nice work. Will you stay right there? We'll teach you how to fillet a fish right after this. This new dad is picturing a tree house in the sky, but, but he's ignoring, ignoring the instructions. Good luck, big guy. His kids know that he's building without a clue. Never been so good with nails and glue. Now we're trapped inside a box. I hope mom knows what to do. Oh, mom. See, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. Connor is struggling in school. Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. Why don't you understand me? I do. This is what it feels like for kids with learning and attention issues. Redirecting to understood.org. Hi, I'm Mike Rowe. 14 years ago, my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. Well, this year, she celebrated her 50th wedding anniversary. Is that why you've taken off your jeans? No, I've taken off my jeans to prove the link between jeans and the fight against breast cancer. Well, that's interesting. Do I have to take off my jeans? No, nobody has to take off their jeans, Mom. But everybody has to go to DenimDay.com right now. I'll explain everything. Dress code optional. Apparently. One in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Learn more at DenimDay.com. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. Welcome back. Our Center for Sustainable Futures campus teaches our students many things about nature. And these students are also learning some culinary and life skills that they can share with you. Here's a quick lesson on how to play a fish. Uh, so I brought in this whole salmon. Uh, we look at the eyes, we look at the gills, we smell it uh, to see if it's fresh. This was actually caught on the uh, 6th. It was delivered to us yesterday. We are going to prepare it today. So once again, we, we look at this fish. We check for freshness. When we push it, it bounces back. The eyes are nice and clear. The gills are starting to brown out. Um, you can start to see that. That is just a sign of it becoming um, you know, less fresh. Uh, so that's why we are going to prepare all today as well. So if we start here, we're looking at the fish. We're actually going to cut right along. We want to cut right on top of this fin, and then we're going to go all the way down to the tail. We're going to cut this. We're going to start right here by essentially cutting, all right? And essentially we're cutting right to, we're going to cut the head off. Now we're going to take our knife and we're going to cut right along that backbone. Once again, I'm just going to do it from this side, okay? And now we're going to take our knife, and do you hear that flipping, that sound? That's cracking right literally through the bones. So we're going to get here, and we want to go right, just run it right along there. Okay. 
So you can tell this is going to be a pretty big fillet. Okay, so now we flip it off. And now this is what the inside of a salmon looks like. So when we talk about pin bones, these are all pin bones right in here. They are right in here as well. And we're gonna have to pluck each one of those out. So we have the nice inside interior of a filet. Uh, once again, this is a really high quality fish. This fish was about $85. We filleted it nice. So now we're just gonna sit that right here. Now on a filet, all right. We have, this is all belly fat that we're actually gonna trim off. All right, so we're just actually gonna trim it pretty much right there. We could do a lot of things with this. We could turn it into like a mousse. We could top it, this mousse, with on here and then dip like potatoes or a lot of stuff in. We'll actually freeze this for a rainy day when we're not having much to do and we'll play around with it. Um, I'm actually gonna try to cut these rib bones right on out. Notice how I am cutting. I'm just kind of doing short little strokes. All right. I don't want to tear this salmon. It's pretty delicate. Okay. And actually, if you were to feel that, it's pretty much all bones. You can see them right in there. So now that I have a nice fillet, we're actually going to pin bone it. And I have some needle nose pliers right here that you need to use. How to pin bone, where to find the pin bones? Pin bones, if you run your hand like opposite of how the fish is, so if you run them just like this, you can actually feel them. If anyone wants to grab a glove and actually be able to feel it, it's pretty obvious. They run pretty much the entire length, so that's a pin bone. All right, they actually make a machine that does this now. So you don't have to do this. Come on up if you got your, once you got your glove on. All right, feel, run your hand. Do you feel those? Oh, yeah. Those are all pin bones. Feel that? Feel them right here, right along that. Those are all pin bones. Now, when we're talking serve safe, if a chef fails to take these out, what kind of contaminant is that? That's a physical contaminant, good. So we're going to try to find right here, on right along there, Just feel those? Those are all pin bones. So we do not want any physical contaminants. So we're gonna take them all. Um, so hopefully I take all the pin bones out because, or else you guys are gonna have some physical contaminants in your uh, fish tomorrow. Don't blame me. <coughs> All right, so you can see this taking a quite a long time. Come on, you little rascal. Um, you don't wanna puncture the fish. All right, so you don't wanna kind of like mutilate it. When you go to a store and you see like a fish mutilated right down here, that means that probably someone that didn't know what they were really doing was picking out pin bones, which is a good sign not to buy the fish. So then you kind of run your whole finger back and forth. I don't feel any. Kind of double check, you keep double checking. All right, I think we are good. Now to fillet this right off from the skin. Oh, there's one left right there. Gotcha. All right, now to fillet it. I always try to work away. My knife is gonna go away. Um, so I don't want any scales on it. I'm gonna clean up my knife and I'm gonna push away, all right? So when you are here, when you have this fish, all right, let's clean up all these pin bones and stuff. I'm gonna take my knife, I'm gonna push, and I'm gonna pull with this hand, all right? It seems kinda weird at first, but you're gonna get it. So we're gonna just cut. Salmon skin is pretty tough, so you're not, you don't have to worry about really cutting through it when you make this first little cut. You can then take your knife and you see how I'm holding this and I'm just kind of wiggling my knife down through. Now that I have this, essentially you don't want any salmon meat left on your filet or on the skin. So I'm gonna pull this. Notice the angle of my knife. My knife is at about a 45, 35 degree angle. 
and I'm just gonna keep pulling this and pushing with my other hand. Okay, notice short little strokes. All right, now if I take this out, so it kind of looks like snake skin, right? But notice, I did one heck of a job. There's no meat left on that, right? Now, if we look at this side, how does that side look? Looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? So now from here, we can cut our fillets or our, our, our portions. Up here, this is all a fat little chain. Um, this is, so we're just gonna kind of trim that off. Salmon is a pretty um, fat fit or fatty, oily fish to begin with. Um, so each group is probably gonna get a nice, I always like to trim that part off just to square it up and now I'm gonna start cutting my fillets or my portions. I think I have seven groups. All right, so each group's gonna get one of these. You're just gonna have to split it up when we cook it tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna take one and we're gonna, I mean, that's a big old piece of salmon right there. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Great job, and now you know how to flay a fish too. What a great way to wrap up our show. I'm your host, Kelly Hydrator, and remember, make it a great day, Lenaway.